Connors to lay off. Hi, Mr. Lawrence. How are you? Um, uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm nothing to do with the department. That was the little man over there in the black raincoat. Uh, we had to distract him so that I could have a few private words with Who him. Who is it this time? Moscow, Peking? <laughs> Sorry. Another wrong guess. <laughs> Who? I represent a private individual who, for the moment, prefers to remain anonymous. However, I am empowered to offer you a very remunerative position in uh, your line of business. Haven't you heard? I've quit that line of business. Does the department allow its agents to quit, even for personal reasons? Well, I can understand your feelings about the young lady, judging from her photographs. Well, I was only offering my condolences to you in your moment of sad bereavement. I can do without your sympathy. Well, then may I offer you something else, a change of scenery? A first-class transportation, $5,000 and expenses, just for one week of your time, just for a job interview. Well, it's not to be sneezed at, Mr. Lawrence, for an agent who is unemployed and, dare I hope, available. Unavailable. Now, you tell your employer that and anyone else you happen to run into in the marketplace. My dear boy, you're serious. How very insensitive of me to try and press you back to work so soon after your sad loss. Perhaps another time. Morning. Do you spare something for the orphan children of St. Cecilia?
It was Peking. Where am I? The island. What? <laughs> there is only one island. <laughs> You're worlds apart in sartorial tastes, Mr. Lawrence, but I trust that the clothes we've chosen for you will be to your liking. How long have I been here? Well, we had to wait for you to recover before continuing our conversation. Our conversation? The job interview? I'm sure you remember. How do you feel? How should I feel? You were a victim of one of our new devices. I gather the effect is very uncomfortable. They say that when they turn it up full, the sound vibrations liquefy the brain. <laughs> Nico. Shall we go down? Music is food for the hungry soul. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawrence? The world of sound vibrations is relatively unexplored. I find it endlessly rewarding. In art, it has the power to soothe, but in science, it has the power to hurt. I hope you fully recovered from your painful experience, Mr. Lawrence. Madam Sin. Oh, I'm flattered you know about me. According to your department's files, I don't exist. I'm, I'm just an illusion, like that holograph film of the musician you've been watching. I never had any doubts about your existence. Well, what made you so sure when everyone else thought I was a figment of the imagination? There were just too many rumors about you. People enjoy spreading stories. You know that, Mr. Lawrence. Or else they're looking for someone convenient to blame for their own misdeeds. Was that the story in 58 when Lombardo was assassinated? What about the revolution in Gajara in 65? Was it just rumor that you started that to get the oil refineries back? The assassination of Lumboto was in 57, not 58. Isn't that so, De Vere? December. The month the diamond mines were taken over from the government. Yes. You're all that we hoped for and more. We were quite right to invite him, De Vere. I agree. I thought I turned down the invitation. I'm going to be very glad I didn't let you. This way, Mr. Lawrence.
just water, Mr. Lawrence. No ice, I believe. I'll ask you to sit down, but our journey's going to be a short one. We're going someplace? Downwards. And now, uh, sideways. It makes a change from the usual elevator, doesn't it? You're going to get a guided tour we don't give to everyone. You're a very special guest. You mean prisoner? Well, you're a prisoner only if you think of yourself as one. I suppose it would be stupid of me to ask how you know my favorite brand. Like father, like son. This is where we handle our business. Madam Sin's engaged in every major enterprise that's worth being engaged in. Some of them perfectly legal. She knows every minute where every ship in her entire merchant fleet is. We route and reroute them according to computerized information, reflecting prices, weather, government crises, and so on and so forth. Hello. I suppose none of these enterprises are in your name. Oh, that would spoil things for us and the customer. You've seen where I make my money. Now you're going to see where I spend it. This is Madame Sin's think tank. These scientists are the finest brains in the world in their own fields. They're all totally dedicated. Not to Madame Sin, but to their work. But the products of their minds are at her disposal. I give them everything they ask for. Everything. No matter what it costs. That's Salvatore Linghetti. You may recall reading an appraisal of his work five years ago in the obituary columns of the world's press. And look at him now. He's more alive than he ever was. Now that is Dr. Chen. Uh, his body is here, but his mind is uh, elsewhere, in outer space, usually. Now, by pure mathematics, he discovered the existence of an entire galaxy. One of these days, he may discover something near a home, something I can use, and he has a whole lifetime to try. That's Mr. Willoughby. I'm very fond of him. Though I wouldn't expect you to share my affection for him. He invented that little weapon that gave you such an awful headache. But that's the bigger version of it. Now, he was in high fi when we first heard about him. He invented a tape recorder of the size of a cigarette packet and gave a demonstration at the Philharmonic Hall. But from the rear seats, you could hardly see the thing. But the music that came out of it filled the auditorium. Unfortunately, 139 people sued him for a permanent loss of hearing and 14 for serious brain damage. We hated the idea of a genius like that wasting his life in jail. Of course, he's gone beyond high fi now, way beyond. Shh. human brain. All right, isn't it? Enjoys thoughts like that. At heart, he's still a nasty little schoolboy. That's Professor Fernando Henriquez. He hasn't even realized the full potential of this thing. It's so new, we haven't even got a name for it yet. showing me all of this. Because I want you to see everything before you start to work for me. I have a very special job for you.
We'll have to get you an old-fashioned ball and chain, mate. Madam Sin wants to see you. Nicotia? I, I... I don't know. I made it up. This afternoon, I think. Well, you played it delightfully. You may go now, Nico. She's never even heard of Mozart. You saw us teaching her the little sonata in 20 seconds. Yes, it's quite a sophisticated box of tricks they've got down there. It gets right into the memory cells of the brain and places any information that Madame Sin wishes to be placed there. True or false information? Either. Or both, if need be. It can eradicate any memory Madame Sin wishes to be eradicated. It can erase a man's past life and give him a new set of memories. And that's what we had to do with Nico, wasn't it, Madame Sin? Everything she thinks about was implanted in her brain by that clever little gadget. Isn't that the same as murdering her? Murder is your profession, I believe. Or am I wrong? Did you tend rose gardens for the department? I found that girl at the age of 12 in the back room of an Asian brothel. She was sold by a wandering tribesman as spoils of war after her family had been slaughtered in front of her. For years after I found her, she was insane. Then I discovered the means to erase those memories and implant new ones. So today she believes she started her life here with music and with love. Now tell me, Mr. Lawrence, have any of your murders been as merciful as that? I can't answer that. No, of course you can't. You intelligence agents justify everything you do, including your murders. But what about when you murder your own? Sit down, Mr. Lawrence. See that couple on the steps? 
They're friends of yours, I believe. The man on the right is Bill Connors, your immediate superior in the department. And the girl. Barbara. It took us a little time to focus our directional microphone. You didn't know anything about this meeting, did you, Mr. Lawrence? You never had a chance to discuss it with Barbara because she was sent to Paris that night. And the next day, she disappeared. Take a closer look. Now, you have to be at the airport in an hour. Suppose they aren't at that address. Do I have to wait around for them? They'll be there. They want to hear what you're going to tell them. Just make sure you're telling the right people, that's all. They weren't the right people, but they were the people Connors knew would be there. London Airport, driver. Did she buy it? No, yeah, she's on her way to Paris. Think she'll hold out when they give her the treatment? She'll tell them everything. They're a pretty rough bunch. You understand, don't you, that the information Barbara carried was false? It was intended to be leaked to the Chinese. And that's exactly who were waiting for her when she arrived at her destination in Paris. They didn't send you because they knew you weren't likely to crack under torture, as she would. Poor quality photography. But we can't always choose the best camera position. did, in fact, take them most of the night. She was a stronger girl than any of them expected. But in the end, she cracked and gave them all that false information that Connors had planted on her. What happened afterwards? We don't know. We can't show you any film of their throwing her body into the Seine or however else they disposed of her. I'm afraid you were having dinner that night with the man who sent her there. Well, I need it. I wish I didn't feel quite so uncomfortable with the notion of a man like Lawrence wandering about at will. How far can he go? True. And where can he go? He's wanted everywhere. The world thinks he's defected. I made sure of that been very thorough. And even if he had the power to leave us, I'm quite confident he wouldn't do so. I think we can safely say we have captured his interest. No doubt, no doubt. It's just that I'm devoted to the theory that says where large sums of money are concerned, don't take any chances. Devere, I think you were a silly little man. I didn't know you were also a financial genius. Thank you.
Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Mr. Lawrence. I think you should leave the questioning to us. Who are you? I'm a fisherman. I'm a fisherman. The wind was strong, I was blown off course. Who do you work for? Who sent you here? I'm a fisherman. I'm a fisherman. The wind is strong, I was blown off course. We don't listen to the lies that come out of his mouth. We look at the truth inside his mind. Watch there. Who do you work for? Who sent you here? Who do you work for? Who sent you here? I'm a fisherman. I'm a fisherman. The wind was strong, I was blown off course. Who do you work for? Who sent you here? I'm a fisherman. I'm a fisherman. The wind was strong. I was blown off course. I'm a fisherman. Why do you carry a gun? To kill the sharks. To kill the sharks. To kill the sharks. Look, we know you're an agent and you work for Connors. Who were you told to kill with that gun? The sharks. The, the sharks. Who were you told to kill with that gun? The sharks. The sharks. The sharks. Who were you told to kill? The sharks! The sharks! You were sent by the department to kill Anthony Lawrence. No! 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 You know too much, Anthony. From the moment you formed an emotional attachment to Barbara, you were both classified as security risks. From their point of view, it was safer to kill you too. Don't worry, that man will go back. Thorough program by Professor Henry Case. He will be convinced this island is inhabited only by an eccentric foreign lady who is rich and harmless. So you see, I can offer you a sanctuary here if you want it. All I want to do is get my hands on the man who killed Barbara. Ah, and after him. How about the man who gave him the order? And the man behind that man, where is it supposed to stop? How many times and in how many ways do I have to prove to you there is no right or wrong, no good or bad, only winners and losers, and I'm a winner, so stay with me. I don't really have anywhere else to go. <laughs> oh, you're so much like someone I once knew. You've got his face, you've got his idealism, but you've got something else. You're too smart to waste your energy on lost causes like he did. You seem to have known him very well. You look so much like your father when you walked in that I thought for a moment he'd come back to life. Just the way he looked when I first met him. I thought he was a Yugoslavian tourist and he thought I was a Russian agent. In fact, he was the agent and I was in Istanbul merely for a holiday. It took us a lot of days and nights together to discover our mistake. And when we did, we couldn't stop laughing. For a month, we had been talking to each other in Serbo Croat. <laughs> he was around your age then, and so was I. I don't recall my father ever mentioning you. No, well, perhaps that's just as well. Because we didn't part friends. Let's just say, I wanted it to last forever, and he didn't. Now, come on. You didn't bring me all the way here to talk about old times. Quite right. I'm going to ask you to do something for me. I'm listening. I want you to help me hijack a Polaris submarine. Just one? Well, one is all my customer wants. He only has a billion dollars to spend. I hesitate to contradict you, Madam Sin, but have you got him? Are you sure you aren't deceiving yourself? Have you ever known me to do that? Perhaps. After all, you are a woman. There have been occasions. When I need a character analysis, I shall give you a sample of my handwriting. With the deepest respect, I'm merely asking why you don't make certain of his loyalty by using the technical means at your disposal. There is no need. I have used emotional persuasion instead, and it is just as effective. But not as permanent. Emotions have an unfortunate habit of changing. I have no desire to discuss this any further. Madam Sin, as your closest friend and devoted admirer, I must ask your permission to pursue this matter just a little further for the sake of everything that you and I care about so dearly. Money. 
Well, go on. Why did you choose Anthony Lawrence for this assignment? Because he is the right man for the job. Why? Because he and Cavendish know each other. That's why. It had nothing to do with your feelings about his father. Nothing. That was 20 years ago. It had nothing to do with curiosity to see if he reminded you of his father. It had nothing to do with that. Thank you. Oh, I just wanted to be sure. Thank you. Do you know who that is? Am I right, Anthony? Yes. I used to work with him, Teddy Cavendish. Commander Cavendish, Royal Navy. He's in charge of Polaris submarines, and one in particular, the Starfish, a prototype of a really advanced design and fitted out with those terribly expensive nuclear missiles. She's going to be making a series of sea trials very shortly under the control of your friend up there. How long since you've seen him? Four or five years. But he would know you. Mm -hmm. hey, come on, what kind of crazy idea are you up to? Uh, I suppose you want me to kidnap the man. Brilliant. How did you guess? You know, I believe you're serious. You see, we want to give him a little trip in Dr. Henrique's brain probe machine. We'll introduce the idea into his brain that we should have that submarine. Then at the proper moment, he'll go back and send it to us. Now, it's really quite simple. The difficult part is that no one must suspect he's been kidnapped. Not even after we've taken him back. How do you suggest we do that? Well, we were rather hoping you'd tell us. I've never been able to resist a challenge like that, so I went to work on the problem right away. And I've watched Cavendish for long enough now to give you a pretty full rundown on his regular habits. He's always guarded. Most of the time, he's got security men and naval personnel all around him. And it would take a major military assault to get near him. But one day a week, he comes out of the naval base area, and that's our chance to get him. There's this quiet little town in the north of Scotland. The people who go there don't want to be reminded that just over the horizon is a base full of Polaris submarines. So the Royal Navy cooperates with the local Chamber of Commerce and keeps tactfully out of sight. Except Fridays. That's the day Commander Cavendish comes across the bay for lunch. That's the day he steps out of his tight security net and for a couple of hours he is accompanied by only two men. The first is his driver. This man brings a limousine from Naval Headquarters 21 miles away to pick up Cavendish every Friday at lunchtime. He's a very punctual man. The other man we have to worry about is his bodyguard, Trevor White. This man is keen, and he knows his job. He stays close at all times, and separating these two men is going to be the toughest part of our operation. The attraction is a restaurant up the coast that specializes in the local seafood. I learned that Cavendish has a standing reservation for lunch every Friday. But our pickup has got to be made before they ever get to that restaurant. And next Friday is the big one for us. At around noon, the limousine will be on the way to meet him at the pier. That Friday will be our last chance because the day after, he's going to have that brand new submarine dangling on the end of his string. And I find the prospect of picking it off that string quite fascinating. You wouldn't like to swap cars, would you? Yeah, what's your problem? Well, it's a silly question. I wondered if you had anything I could tighten up my carburetor with. Look, mate, you're blocking the road. And a carburetor's pouring out petrol out of bathroom tap. <laughs> I don't suppose you've got a toolkit here, because these things never go wrong, do they? Look, I'm sorry, mate. I'm a bit pushed for time. I know, I know. I've got a client waiting myself. I just want something to do up a couple of little nuts. It'll only take you half a minute. Oh, I'm sorry, this one's a bit too small. Have you got a 716? Look, I've got no time. And I've got no tools. Here we are. 
I'll sort it out from there, will you? Uh, thanks. Yeah, but hurry up. If I get fired, I'll be coming to you for a job. You worry too much. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Sure, get Thank in. Thank you, sir. What's the matter? Oh, I've got a puncture. Two punctures? Yeah, I know. It's not my lucky day. Where's the commander's car, Chief? Well, it's a bit of a mystery, sir. I've been on the phone and he left it in the usual part. Oh, I'll give him five minutes. Better double-check. We don't want to hang around here. Very good, sir. Not going to believe me. Would you? You realize this is quite unforgivable. Did you check up in the car before you left? Yes, sir. Anything wrong then? No, sir. I can understand one puncture, but two, that, that sheer incompetence. I'll have to go back to the base for lunch. No, no, why should I? Come on, wait, wait. We'll use this thing. Tony Lawrence. Well, I'll be. This is a little ridiculous. What are you doing up here? Would you believe fishing? <laughs> ah, of course. I say thanks for helping my driver out of trouble. Oh, Any time. You all alone? Yes. At lunch? No, I haven't. I was... Then uh... you're having it with me. That's an order. Want to be my new driver? Just a moment, Commander. I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, Tony Lawrence, meet Trevor White. Oh, nice meeting you. Relax, man. He used to do your job when I was with NATO. <laughs> Worried about me just like you do. I don't need both of you to take me to lunch. I'd like to talk to you sometime. Of course. But don't you think that... Get the boys to show you where the pub is. Come on, let's go, Tony. I'm usually well into the first course. I'm taking you to a favorite restaurant of mine, okay? Nonsense, sir. Coming with me. Next time. Which restaurant is that? Back here at 3 o'clock. I have to be back right in time. I hope you don't mind. But this place isn't very far. Good to see you, Tony. Very good to see you. Still married to the giant redhead? That's right, Maureen. She's still six feet tall. No change, huh? <laughs> Not in the height department. <laughs> How's uh, Barbara? She's, uh... It's a long story, Teddy.
out, Teddy. What is this? If you don't get out, he'll kill you with that thing. They've got 35 minutes. It will be enough. Better be. I have never seen him look so much like his father. I feel I can predict everything he's going to do. Is he going to end up turning against you the way his father did? Can you predict that? Bring him to me.
That man doesn't work for the Chinese. He belongs to you. Cavendish will be ready in 10 minutes. You had Barbara killed. You murdered her. Not in Paris, right here. That dialogue about sending her to her death. You had it dubbed onto the soundtrack. You made the entire film for my benefit. Why? I had to. It was the only way I could get you on my side. And for that, you murdered a girl? You are really something. You're not a woman. You're a disease. You should be wiped out. Yes, I understand now why my father never mentioned you. What did you do to him? Who did you have to kill to get him on your side? You're poisonous. Darling, I know. I'll explain everything when you get me away from here. But not now. You shall kill me for real. You shall kill us both. I know Madame Sin will try to forgive you for the hurtful things you said. If it were me, I know I should find it very difficult. But then she's a much more understanding person than I am. Now I know why they didn't need to put me in that brain machine. Oh, yes, you made us play our trump card. Wins the trick, though, doesn't it? I know you two got a lot to talk about, but I'm afraid it will have to wait. We'll take very good care of Barbara for you while you're gone. She'll be as anxious as any of us that Cavendish gets back to work on time and that no one suspects anything happened to him during his lunch break. Won't you, Barbara? Me, darling, Twenty minutes late already. Shall I phone the restaurant? They went to a different place. Where? I don't know. I'm not going to hang around here. That car could be wrapped around a tree or in a ditch. Let's go and look for it. before he snaps out of it. He should be out of it by now. Oh, remember, if anything goes wrong, I won't be far away.
चले Stupid noise. Shut that darn thing off! Quite unnecessary use of that siren, Chief. People out here are on holiday. Come up here for peace and quiet, understood? Yes, sir. Let's not leave it too long until the next time, Tony. Next time you're coming to my restaurant. Right? Right.
This is the only living creature that I love because I can't change him. I have to let him be just what he is, a born killer. And I wouldn't even want to change that. Did it go well? Yes. And Cavendish? Perfect. And what about Lawrence? He's dead. Well done. <laughs> Excuse me. Can you make a phone call for me, please? I'm deaf and I won't be able to hear the people on the other end of the phone. Uh, would you do that for me, please? Uh, I've got to take the kids to We just got here yesterday, you see. I'm deaf. Deaf. Uh, you're deaf. Daddy, come on. Stop talking. I'd, uh, I had this accident, you see, and I, and I can't hear. But I've got the right change. And if I dial the number, you can give them the message for me, OK? Wait here. Don't run away. Are you in some kind of trouble, my friend? I, I don't want to get mixed up in anything. Have they answered yet? Here, put the money in. Now, ask to speak to Major Connors. Tell him that it's urgent. Uh, hello, can I speak to Major Connors, please? It's urgent. Who's calling? Are they putting you through to Major Connors? Who shall I say is calling? They want to know. If you're through to Major Connors, tell him that it's Tony Lawrence, that I'm in Scotland, near the naval base, that there's going to be an attempt made today to steal the starfish. That's a Polaris submarine. Tell him that. Uh, look, uh, this is a wee bit embarrassing, but uh, there's a chap here that says he's deaf and that a submarine's going to be pinched. That's what he says. I don't know anything about it. He just asked me to make the phone call for him. I'm on holiday here. Tell him that the commander... Teddy Cavendish has been brainwashed, that he's been programmed. Uh, he's going on about a chap named Cavendish. He's been brainwashed. He cannot be trusted. He's got to I'm be replaced. So, I'm sorry to go on about this, but uh, he's going he on about He has got to be replaced. He has to be replaced. Their plan is to misdirect the submarine into a trap. It's uh, going into a trap. They're going to sell it to totally irresponsible revolutionaries. No, now, if those missiles it. get into the hands of the wrong no, people, I, I just they'll be able to blow up half the I'm world. Have you got here. that? So I took them down before breakfast. The wife's making breakfast at the digs. I, um, What are they saying? This is Tony Lawrence. I can't hear one word you're saying, so you needn't bother to answer. Just listen. The starfish is going to be kidnapped today. Have you got that? Commander Teddy Cavendish has been brainwashed. He's been programmed. Now, if I'm not talking to Major Connors, be sure that he gets this message. It's urgent. I repeat, urgent. You think they got it? Are you sure? I've got to take the children home. Were you speaking to Major Connors? I expect so. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Is there enough fuel in this thing to get me to the naval base? You can't go this 
sap. It's a military zone. It's strictly forbidden. Come back. Come back. Look at that idiot, sir. You have entered a restricted area. Alter core. Target, small craft. Range zero two zero. Deflection. Eight. What's the matter with him? If you, you proceed, proceed on, on this course, course you, you will, will be fired, fired upon. upon. He's asking for it. I repeat, I repeat if you, you proceed, proceed on this course, course you, you will, will be fired, fired upon. upon. He's deaf, so he can't discuss it. He's an American. Friend of the commander, apparently. Nothing wrong with his hearing yesterday lunchtime. Anthony Lawrence. Yes, Anthony Lawrence. Are you sure? Well, thanks for telling us. We're always the last to know. No, I don't think it'd be any trouble. Got your handcuffs. What's he done? They've been expecting him. He's a bloody spy. Just let me make one phone call. One call. You can listen in at the other end. I wouldn't hear it anyway. I didn't break into... Look, I didn't break into this base. I came in in broad daylight. All I want to do is make one phone call. Let me talk to the senior officer in charge of the base. You don't understand. I can't hear you anyway. We can't hear you either. Golf Whiskey 1 Bravo, this is HQ1. Proceed with report on Vector 7, 1, 1, 2, 3, and 5, 4. In accordance with Plan X-Ray. Over. HQ1, this is Golf Whiskey 1 Bravo. Wilco, stand by. Vector 7, three contacts. Numbers 1, 9, 2, 6, and 3, 2. 1, 9, classified friendly. 2, 6, classification suspect. 3, 2, alien November 4. Over. Control. Yes, yes, we have him on the chart loud and clear. Proceeding with phase two of the program. Yes, looking good. Yes. Keep you posted. Four nine short post. One four seven long post. This is HQ one. Roger. You okay, sir? HQ one. This is Golf Whiskey one. Here she comes, gentlemen. Plan India, Sector 1. Negative gradient. Force Delta Bravo 7. Sector 2. Isothermal. Force X-ray Bravo 7. Yes, that's Anthony Lawrence. I'm glad you've got the right man. Would you make arrangements to have him escorted back to London? Right away. Stay with me, Mr. Connors. This kind of thing isn't your style, is it, Tony? Infiltrating a naval base and a fishing boat? You used to have more uh, finesse when you were on my team. Carters, am I glad to see you. You got my message. You get to Cavendish. You've come a long way, haven't you? 
Last we saw of you was in Hyde Park, and you disappeared in an ambulance. Bill, you don't understand. I can't hear you. I'm deaf. They made me deaf. We followed a trail that led us straight to Moscow. Well, I didn't believe it at first, but I guess I do now. I'm not getting through to you, am I? Oh, yes, I think so, Tony. You're trying to get the base commander here relieved of his job on the very day he's handling the new starfish trials. I see what you're trying to do, but what I don't know yet is why. Golf, Whiskey 1, Bravo, this is HQ 1. Angel 3, 2 reports as follows. Vector 5, 4, Zulu, Papa to Zulu, Sierra. Contacts 2, 3 and 2, 8, Sector 3 and 5, respectively. Classified Red Fisher, streaming gadgets. Suspect, proceed with caution. This is HQ 1, Roger. Proceed. 20 seconds. 10 seconds. How very exciting. Five, four, three, two, one. Fire. Whiskey One Bravo, this is HQ One. Do you read me? Shut all bulkheads down. Just spell out the exact situation, Captain. Well, I wish I knew, Teddy. Everything just went haywire. Every needle in the place just went over the maximum. What's it look like to you? What do you make of it at your end? I have reason to suspect sabotage. I repeat that, I have reason to suspect sabotage. What difference does it make if my story does sound unbelievable? Go up there and watch Cavendish. If he departs from the planned schedule, then you'll know that I'm right. You will change course as follows. Immediate execute. Corpen 9-0 to course 240, speed 10. Deck. Corpen 2-0 to course 260, speed 10 in one four minutes time. Sabotage, Teddy. Who drove that one up? And you will maintain this new course until further instructions from me. Yes, Commander Cavendish. Would you mind filling me in, sir? I'm a little in the dark. Could you tell me the source of that information about sabotage? Strictly classified. Well, according to my calculations, sir, the new route would bring the vessel into collision with this small island. Are you questioning me, Lieutenant Commander? No, sir. <laughs> Like your submarine, gentlemen. Gift wrapped. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Should any of your friends be interested in acquiring a submarine or two, put them in touch. In fact, to avoid disappointment, place your orders early for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Disregard previous course instructions. I have reason to suspect sabotage. Disregard previous course instructions. I repeat instructions. that. I have reason to suspect sabotage. You will change course instructions. You will change course immediately, please. Corp and 9 0 to course 2 4 speed 10. I repeat. Corp and 9 0 to course 2 4 speed 10. I have reason to suspect sabotage. I repeat. You'll change course immediately! I have reason to just make sabotage! Change course!
feels like we've been here for a lifetime, not just 24 hours. Oh, Tony, I've never been happier. Me too, and it's just the beginning. Tony, is this for real? Sure, it's real. We're a million miles from everyone. We're in Spain, and it's real. You sure it's not some more of Madame Sin's magic? Oh, positive. You weren't so sure when you and Connors came to the island, found me there all alone, the way you looked. You thought I was a holograph or something, didn't you? I just couldn't understand why she left you behind, that's all. I did my job. She had no more use for me. Hey, where are you going? To get a drink. Hey, you stay here. Drinks on the terrace. Why didn't we do this before? You know something? We had to be crazy the way we used to live. Always looking around to see who was tailing us, suspecting everybody we met. No friends, no home address. I never want this to end. It has to, Tony. Sometime. Well, I don't agree with that. It's different. Hmm. Now you can hear again. You want me to wear earplugs? <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. I... Here's to the new us. Now where are you going? I'll be right back. One of your friends coming back. Never. I can wait until then. Barbara, would you fix me another... They said one would be enough. What are you doing? Time for me to go. Go? Where? There's so many things I'd like to explain, but you haven't got time. You only have a couple of minutes to live. Sorry. What are you talking about? Madam Sin left me behind because she wanted me to give you something. And I've given it to you. In your drink. You had a lot of qualities I shall always remember, Tony. But one fatal flaw. You told women what you thought of them, and you shouldn't. They say your father had the same fault. He told Madame Sin that she was poisonous, too. You see, she is. Barbara, you've got to be. Kidding? No. She promised it wouldn't hurt. Be very quick. Goodbye, Tony. You see, I I'm supposed to wait here until.
drank every bit of it. But it didn't work as quickly as you promised. He just stood there looking at me, and I... You promised me it would be quick. I want that girl programmed again. She'll be happier when we've erased all her sentimental memories of the late Anthony Lawrence. It'll be a pleasure. The trouble with men is they really despise playing games. They don't take games seriously, especially if their opponent is a woman. That's why it's so disappointing to beat men. They never admit when they've lost, unlike myself. But I'm never faced with the problem of losing because I always win. Well, I'm with you. That is, if I understand you correctly, which seems highly improbable. But uh, what I'm concerned about at the moment is your plan to steal the Russian crown jewels. <laughs> oh, you don't approve? Why approve, all right? It's just like question its feasibility. Stop. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is indeed. Oh, it makes me quite homesick. Don't you feel it's a trifle large? Oh, no, I like it. Well, I regret to say, madame, you can't have it. Why not? Well, the British royal family have lived there for centuries. I suspect the present queen has become quite um, attached to it. Drive on. Find out when her lease expires. 